Welcome, everyone, to Atomicon. Thank you for coming. So I'm hoping that I may have just settled a few bets. Uh, it's pronounced Atomicon, kind of like Comic-Con. I've also heard Automaticon and Auto Bacon. People wanted to throw bacon in there for some reason. There's no tomatoes or, or bacon involved. So we, we picked this name because uh, infrastructure as code I.O. or something along those lines was not very interesting or exciting, uh, and we want to be able to discuss uh, different topics in the future, which we'll get into here in just uh, a little bit this morning. So why are we here? Um, I think for the same reason we wanted to put this discussion together that all conferences exist. On the one hand, there's way too many tech conferences. On the other hand, probably all of us feel like there's not one conference that includes all the topics that we really care about or want to discuss. And we, we love vendor conferences and community or DevOps conferences like PuppetConf and ChefConf, DockerCon, reInvent, HashiConf, Velocity, DevOps Days. Those are all great. They have their place, but we still feel like there was not one conversation that encompassed all of our daily concerns. So some of the non-vendor conferences actually exist to discuss any of the things related to our concerns. So for example, DevOps days. Let's just talk about anything related to DevOps. Uh, some of the conferences exist to discuss very specific things like Monotrauma. I recognize many of you here have also participated in Monotrauma to talk about one particular topic. But we were looking for a discussion where we could talk about all of the things, but in context of one another. So what does that mean? To explain further, if you were assigned with the task to distill what almost any business does down into a single statement, you might say that the purpose of a business is to deliver value. So today, a massive percentage of businesses, as we know, are delivering that value through software. So that's the familiar quote from Andreessen that says software is eating the world. So let's jump to a few conclusions and say that to a large extent, a huge number of businesses today exist to deliver software to customers. But that software has to run somewhere. So let's jump to a few more conclusions and say that it could be said that most businesses today have an infrastructure delivery problem. And most of us in the room here, hopefully this is why you're here, we're in the business of solving infrastructure delivery problems. So this is how we arrived upon this topic of infrastructure as code, as a conference, and the continuous delivery or provisioning of that infrastructure as what we wanted to formulate this discussion around. That gives us a topic that we can discuss all of the things, but it will be in context. It's our hope that the huge differences of opinion about what infrastructure as code actually means and also the, the huge shifts that are taking place in thinking about infrastructure and software delivery will set the stage for a lively discussion. I think one of the talks is called Infrastructure as Code is Actually Impossible, um, and we have many other opinions that think that's, uh, that's not the case. So I'm very glad that you could all be here. I kind of want to do another round of applause for that. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So I want to talk about a few goals for the event, and then we're going to invite up Kelsey Hightower. He's uh, agreed to be our MC. Um, so I want to talk about future Atomicon events. Uh, I want to talk about community, and I want to talk about diversity. So it turns out there is a lot of work that goes into putting together an event like this, even a very casual and intimate discussion like we're going to have today. And Although we don't want Atomicon to be a one-time event, it might also not be a, a, a strictly annual event. Everything is subject to change after this week is over and we stop thinking about planning a conference for a little while. Um, the goal that we have for Atomicon at this time is that it should be a thematic event about getting the right people in a room together to discuss an emerging concept or strongly debated topic in our industry. I think we're off to a great start with Atomicon 1.0, if we were going to call it that. And uh, I look forward to seeing or hearing all the presentations. So having said that, as I mentioned, 
this is our first time putting this event together, so we really had no idea what we were doing. If I had any slides instead of a screensaver, it would probably be the, I have no idea what I'm doing, dog. <laughs> um, but we've learned a lot about organizing event in putting this together, thanks to help from a lot of people in this room. Um, and I'm sure that we're gonna learn a lot more before this week is over. So as thrilled as I am with the lineup of presentations that we have for this Atomicon, Atomicon 1.0, I would like to see us make an even stronger commitment to whatever the theme is for Atomicon 2.0. It may be that we'll revisit this topic of infrastructure as code again, or it may be that six, 12, 18 months down the road from now, uh, there will be a, a different topic that we'll try to rally our community around. And speaking of community, one of our goals for Atomicon is to create uh, or facilitate connections across the many disparate communities that we are all members of. At Heavy Water, we participate in a lot of different communities. We're in the Chef community, the Puppet community, Docker, Ruby, AWS, OpenStack, just to name a few. It makes us sad when we see really awesome ideas happening in this community over here, and it doesn't make the transition to another community that could benefit from, from those ideas. So, it's our hope that this event will help facilitate some cross-pollination of ideas between communities. So how will this work? In the early days, we were very strong on the idea that Atomicon should be vendor agnostic and actually should be a community event. That's actually one of the reasons why I put the call out for volunteers to MC. Is we don't want this to be a heavy water owned event. We wanted to create the conversation and invite the community to participate and, uh, and own the conversation. So vendor agnostic though, it doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about tools. I don't think that anyone can tell their story or share their infrastructure as code journey without talking about the tools that made that story possible. However, we should be able to reach a conclusion at the end of each of the presentations about the underlying practices and patterns that could theoretically be applied from that story, from that set of tools to other tools and other stories. I also want to talk about diversity. I don't have anything profound to say about diversity that hasn't been said before, other than the fact that diversity should be a huge priority for every person in this room. Uh, it's, a, it's a big topic in our industry and I think only more perspectives can only help us build a, a better and, and stronger community, which I kind of want to just get another round of applause for that. I'm really proud to say that for our first ever Atomicon, we have about 15% of our registered attendees are women, so I think that's also a really exciting thing. not to mention several other minorities that are represented here. So I, I feel really happy about that. And I want to specifically thank our diversity sponsors, Simple and Elasticsearch that joined us Heavy Water in supporting our diversity scholarship initiative. So if you weren't aware, we had a call out to say, if you have no other way of attending this conference, we didn't even want to define what diversity meant. We just felt that if, if you didn't have a, a job or a, a career that gave you an opportunity to be compensated for attendance at, in a conversation like this, then you were, you were eligible to apply for a diversity scholarship and we covered uh, up to $1,000 of travel expenses and the tickets for the conference. And we, we invited uh, seven people to take advantage of that uh, diversity scholarship. So I'm really proud of that. I lost my spot in my notes here. Um, oh, one really cool story quickly about the diversity scholarship. Oh, hopefully I'm still not running out of time. I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong. I meant to ask Anthony before I got up here. Uh, there was actually a girl from Stuyson, is that how you say that, high school in New York City? Okay, yeah, there's differences of opinion about how to pronounce it. Um, but a girl, actually, that's in high school applied for one of our diversity scholarships, and we thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So we tried to get in touch with her and figure out how could we do that with, you know, parents' approval and whatnot. Um, and it, we weren't able to make it happen, but I think that is a really exciting thing, that we have young people, um, young women even, who are interested in learning more about our industry. industry and 
I mean, infrastructure, it's not really that exciting, I would think, if you're in high school. So I thought that was a, a really, really cool thing to come out of um, that, that offer that we put out. Uh, I also want to say thanks to our sponsors. Uh, they were listed on the screen before my screens ever kicked in. We'll, we'll be talking about them a lot this week. We couldn't have done this without you guys. So thank you very much for, for your support. I want to thank the Portland Art Museum. They were uh, very kind as we continuously move things around. We were originally in a different auditorium where we're going to be tomorrow afternoon. Um, and they, they were very uh, accommodating as we had to make changes as we were figuring this out as we went. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing, dog. Uh, and I also want to thank Jason Dixon. He's running the live stream. Uh, Jason is the organizer of Monitorama, many of you know. So. Monotrama is personally one of my favorite uh, tech events. I, I like his style. Um, and I, so I, I reached out to him immediately when we decided to put this event together. He was my advisor throughout this whole thing, uh, has supported us along the way, telling us what was good and terrible ideas, uh, and also has volunteered to, to run the live stream for us. So thanks to uh, Jason. So let's get started. And before we do, I'm going to tell one last story. I didn't tell Kelsey I was going to do this, but I myself just met Kelsey Hightower in person for the first time this past weekend. We were sitting down talking about how we wanted things to go today. And he said something that I'm going to take completely out of context uh, and then challenge. And I'm doing that because he's going to be running the mic for the rest of the day, so he'll be able to explain all the reasons why I'm wrong for the rest of the day. He said that infrastructure as code is dead. And he, which made me nervous because this is the topic of our conversation today. <laughs> and uh, he went on to argue that one particularly traditional way of thinking about infrastructure as code is being replaced by a new way of thinking about infrastructure and software delivery. And my thoughts on the matter are that I would argue that most organizations still haven't fully experienced what a comprehensive infrastructure as code implementation has to offer in that traditional sense. So have we really solved our infrastructure delivery problems or, or by that uh, traditional workflow? So maybe we haven't even fully figured it out yet is, is my thinking on the matter. And we're moving on because the problem is too complicated, but maybe it's not. Uh, and the second thing I think about that is if these new approaches don't solve the same problems that infrastructure as code has always promised to us, uh, that it would solve, for example, that we can describe our infrastructure as software code, treat it like software, test it, reuse it, track changes to it with revision control, continuously provision it, then should they really be considered disruptive advancements or are they something else, like a, a new take on, on, uh, on maybe even old ideas? So that's my challenge. I hope to be corrected by everyone who's giving presentations today. Kelsey can, uh, can chew me up. I'm going to invite him up now to talk about how the schedule is going to go, and then we're going to get started with Luke. So thank you for being here. <laughs> 